Welcome to September Favorites. I was trying so hard to edit this down to just a few select curated items that I really truly loved, but I gotta be honest with you, I've been doing a little bit of retail therapy after getting my diagnosis. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put it on the screen if you wanna know a little bit more about my medical history. But to sort of soothe my soul, I've been doing a little bit of shopping, got some PR packages, and I've just fallen in love with so many products lately. So what I'm gonna do is just quick little speed reviews rather than going into really meticulous detail about each one. I've got a lot to talk about, but first we're gonna thank today's sponsor. If you've been here for a while, you know that Beach Waver is my favorite hair tool company, and I have a new tool to show you today on how you can get super duper fast messy waves. This is the 3B waiver in Midnight Rose and you can always use my code State of Kate for 20% off your order. What I love about Beach Waver is that when you press the power button, their products heat up lightning fast, like less than 30 seconds. And I'll show you how I like to use this one on second day hair um, for a very like textured high ponytail. So I section my hair into two parts, then I take a small section and I just start kind of at the root, but I go so fast, like just enough to give it some, some texture. So I just find that it's really easy to add texture and volume to a ponytail with the waver. So fast, boom, 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 wavy hair. See how much difference that side is gonna make versus this side in a ponytail. Obviously you can style this how you want, but I just, I just love the way it looks in a pony. So that is how I double the thickness of my ponytail and I give my ponytail some texture and some volume. And if I feel like the ponytail is just still looking a little rough anywhere, I will just do a quick little shoop, shoop, little back comb with my fingers, not even with a brush or a comb. I pulled out a couple pieces and that is my under five minute, messy, voluminous, fun, lifted ponytail with the Beach Waver 3B Waver. Again, you can use my code State of Kate for 20% off your order. And anytime you see me with curly hair on my channel, I'm using the B1 Beach Waver in Pink Sunset. And if I have wavy looking hair, I'm using the 3B Waver. Thank you, Beach Waver. Now let's get started on my September favorites. The first one that I wanna talk about is essentially my signature scent for fall and winter, and it's Diptyque Eau Dwell. This is such a gorgeous take on vanilla, and I'll put the notes on the screen below. It's a spicy vanilla, so I believe there's some black tea, there's some spices in there, but really what you mostly smell is just a stunning, grounded vanilla, meaning it's not super sweet. A lot of people say this is a unisex fragrance, um, so anyone can wear it if you like the scent of vanilla. It's just absolutely perfect. If you didn't see on Instagram, I'm currently going down a vanilla perfume rabbit hole. I purchased about 10 samples, maybe more of vanilla fragrances because I love this one so much, but I just want to know what else is out there. So if you want a vanilla roundup video, let me know in the comment section below, but this baby is my number one. For nighttime only, I love wearing Diptyque's Orpheon in the fall and winter months. The fragrance description for this is just so wonderful. They create this whole scent memory of Paris in the 1960s. So I will leave my favorite perfume video on the screen above. And so you can check that out and go into more detail about this fragrance. But basically this is supposed to mimic the bar that the Diptyque founders used to frequent in the sixties in Paris. So it has notes of juniper berries and juniper berries are used to make gin. It has notes of jasmine, cedarwood, tonka bean, and powder blusher. It just creates the scent memory where you like walk into a bar, you smell maybe a little bit of smoke as well. It's woody, it's a little like bright from the juniper berries, but it's grounded and creamy and comforting from the tonka bean. And I hate, 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 hate powdery notes and perfumes. This is the only one that I love. It just smells not like a powdery scent, but it actually smells like like original like 1950s powder blush. It's so interesting. I've never smelled anything like it and it's so special. I love wearing this, especially in the colder months. Just check it out. It's so good. In terms of candles, I placed an order for the new Savants Harvest Table Candle. This is Ingrid Nilsson's brand and it's just exactly the kind of fall fragrance that you want in a candle, but it's a grounded gourmand, so it's not too sweet. It just smells like exactly what the notes are and the notes are cardamom, cranberries, cinnamon, sugar, pecan, streusel and toasted pistachio. I could burn this year round, honestly. I'm like very much a fall, winter candle, year round kind of girl. Um, the only thing I will say is this baby packs a punch. It's a seven ounce candle, so it's kind of small, but it fills up my entire house. 
I personally love this and it's not too overwhelming for me. Unfortunately, John asked me to blow it out when I was burning it last night. He said that he could smell it all the way from upstairs and it was just too strong for him. So that's a bummer. Like I can only burn this when he's out of town basically, but I love it so, so, so much. I think it smells incredible. So if you're someone who is just sick of candles that don't have any throw to them, you will absolutely love this. And I really like that the new Savant creates scent memories on their labels. So this one says, the smell is nutty, warm, and delectable. And the feeling is fall baking, retro cooking shows, a sneaky taste of cake batter, your coziest sweater, gathering around the table with friends that are family. I just love it. I love their little scent memories that they create. And my last fragrance pick is by Rado's Ombro Japonais Candle. This is absolutely my favorite fall and winter candle. Nothing beats this. So the website says, Ombro Japonais celebrates the sophisticated art of Japanese gardens. The candle evokes an imaginary place where black peppercorn grows together with coriander seeds and in which bourbon vanilla melds with the toasted scent of sesame and notes of sandalwood. Don't let the notes scare you. It's not like a spicy candle. I actually don't really like when candles have like a ton of black pepper and cardamom. It's just a hint of spice so that bourbon vanilla vanilla is super, super grounded, but there's something in here, bear with me, that smells like dust and I love it. It's like if someone were baking in an old cabin. That's what it smells like to me. It, it's so comforting. This is my nighttime entertaining candle. So when I have guests over, this is the candle that I light when we're like sitting down to have a couple drinks and the sun's down and you're getting really cozy. Everybody asks me what this is and they always end up buying it. I love this so much. I wish they made it into a fragrance. By Rado, please, please, please make an ombre japonais perfume because it's incredible. The only thing I don't like about By Rado candles is the label bubbles. So that really bothers me that the labels always seem really cheap and they always bubble, but I just love this candle so much, I will repurchase it forever. I wanna just highlight the magic of the REM Sweetener Concealer. This is in the shade 7C. I've filmed a bunch of videos with the shade Light 5N, but I'm sending that to my friend Dev because it was just a little bit too light. I'm wearing this all over my face today in place of foundation. I didn't put it under my eyes because I wanted to show the milk makeup on camera today. It's so pink and it matches me perfectly, which is just such a relief. I have such a hard time finding any kind of base product that is cool enough on my skin. And I just love the texture of this. It is like a cross between the NARS Soft Matte Concealer and the Glossier Stretch Concealer. It has that velvetiness of the NARS Soft Matte Concealer, but it's a little bit more skin-like than that one. And it's not nearly as dewy as the Glossier Stretch Concealer, and it has more coverage. This puts REM Beauty on the map for me. This is one of the best concealers I have ever tried. It's so multifunctional. It's incredible incredible as a foundation. I mean, look at the way my skin looks. It looks like I have coverage, but it still looks like skin. It's not cakey or heavy. It never gets crumbly or weird. It doesn't get oily. It doesn't get dry looking. It lasts all day. It's incredible. Incredible, incredible, I'm obsessed. The next concealer favorite I have is the new Milk Makeup Future Fluid Concealer in 8C. I'm wearing this all under my eyes today. Another wonderful match. It has 30 shades. This has a very creamy, but lightweight, like whipped, like liquid cream consistency. It's medium to full coverage. I was able to build it up to full coverage today with two layers of concealer and it doesn't look too cakey. It really does crease the least out of any concealer I've ever tried. However, I do notice that it does fade pretty quickly in terms of the coverage by the end of the day. So it's the kind of concealer that I do have to touch up. And I also find that because it's a soft matte finish, throughout the day as I smile, my smile lines and crow's feet on my eyes will look a little bit more pronounced versus if I were wearing a creamier, more hydrating concealer. But with the more hydrating concealers, I'll have more creasing. So really just depends on what you're looking for, but I think this is just a great option from Sephora. Obviously, I had to talk about the Cool Feet Concealer. This has blown me away. It is in the shade Ice Ice Berry, which is the lightest shade. Unfortunately, they have a very, very limited shade range. This is not a very light shade. I would describe it as like light with slightly warm or neutral undertones. So when I do put this all over my face, my face looks a little bit yellow. So I'm really hoping that they expand their shade range soon. I did talk to the brand and they said they're expanding the range. So that's great. 
I find that this is one of the best creamiest consistencies I've ever tried. It has a slightly dewy finish. It almost just blurs the skin. It's so gorgeously creamy. It has medium coverage. I wouldn't say buildable. It's just a solid medium. And I believe Coolfi is the first South Asian beauty brand at Sephora. I'm also featuring another one of their products later on in this video. So yeah, the fact that they only have like two or three products and yet two of them are in my favorites video, very excited to see what they release next. I have never used a powder like the Fit Glow Blurring Bamboo Hyaluronic Acid Powder. A lot of people said it looks like the By Terry and that might be true, I have no idea. But this is so good. So let me show you in the application footage. Mattifies the skin, controls oil, blurs and kind of softens imperfections and texture, lasts a really long time, does not look dry or cakey, doesn't feel super tight or dry, but a little goes a long way. So just use a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. If you do like a ton of powder, you'll feel a little bit tight and dry, but it's just so fantastic. I don't wanna use any other powder. I don't, this one's, it's too good. Here's one that you guys recommended to me. This is the Tom Ford Glow Bronzer in the shade Terra, and this is the mini size. So obviously it's Tom Ford, this was still very expensive, but I do wanna be transparent that I'm gonna be doing a sponsorship with Neiman Marcus next month, and they gave me a gift card to buy beauty products on the site. And so I did get this for free. I love it. It's definitely exactly the color I was looking for. You guys recommended this to me because I was looking for a powder bronzer that wasn't super orange. As much as I love the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer in Light that I've been using for a while, it's just a little too warm on my cool toned skin. So let me just swatch it here for you. Such a nice bronzer shade. It's like just barely a little warm. Such a perfect bronzer shade for light, cool toned skin. The formula is a dream. It's not super dry and powdery. It's pigmented, but it's not too pigmented. So it looks patchy. It's fantastic. I gotta be honest with you, I've been wearing only one blush for the entire month. Like literally one blush, except maybe a couple times. It's the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur Blush in Blurred Buff. I originally tried this because of the Garso twins. They recommended it and they were like, this is the perfect everyday blush. And they were totally right. I'm wearing it on my cheeks right now. And it just goes with everything. I would describe it as a slightly warm, like slightly orangey tan, but it's not so orange that it looks orange. It's just a warm tan, almost like the blush version of a bronzer. I feel like this is always sold out, so I'm terrified that they're gonna discontinue this. When you rub your finger on it, it feels like a creamy powder. You know that feeling. These textures of a cream powder hybrid are my favorite for complexion products because you get the skin-like quality of a cream, but you get the fast application and the longevity of a powder. Nothing beats this kind of formula and it's one of my favorite shades. No one will be surprised to hear that I have three clear lip balms today. Pacifica sent this to me. It's their new vegan collagen complex lip balm. I was very confused when I was looking up the link for this on the website because the website shows it as like a shimmery purple and I was so shocked because I've only ever applied this like without a mirror thinking it was clear and it always looks clear on my lips, but actually it's purple. So I'll show you up close here. It looks like it's purple, right? And in the application footage, you can see it's clear. It's just the most incredible, affordable lip balm I've tried in a long time. And I'm just gonna apply a little bit right now so I can describe the texture a little better. See how it's clear? It's totally clear, so don't let the color freak you out. I feel like this is the kind of lip balm everybody will love because you can get it at Ulta, it's affordable, it smells like vanilla, and it's that perfect Goldilocks texture. It's not too thin, not too thick, somewhere in the middle, but it has really great grip to it. It has a little bit of cushion. I would say the Rode Beauty that I'll talk about next has more grip, but it's perfect. When I did my lip collection video, my lips were like, burning, they felt like they were on fire from using so many makeup wipes to remove the lipsticks. This instantly reduced the inflammation. Like it soothed my lips so I didn't have any issues the next day. It actually is an effective product. If there's like one thing you buy, I feel like it should be this. The next lip balm I'm obsessed with is the Tarte Vegan Lip Slip Lip Balm in Clear. Yeah, it's just called Clear. It's so random. I've never heard anyone talk about it except for Rudy Berry, and she has raved about this for such a long time. She sold me because she said it was the most cushiony product in a stick she'd ever tried, and she's totally right. It is just, oh, it's so good. You, it's the kind of product that you just wanna keep like swiping and swiping and swiping because it's like so thick, so cushioning. 
Mm, so nourishing. It smells like orange chocolate. It's something a little bit sweet, something a little bit citrusy. I just can't put my finger on what it is, but it's something that's really, really delicious, like a baked good that's slightly citrusy. I have no idea. You can get it at Ulta for $15 and you can get the mini one of Fresh Pressed for $10 on Ulta. And the last lip balm I've just been obsessed with is the Rode Beauty Peptide Lip Treatment. The hype on this one's real. This is my favorite from the line. Although I really do like their peptide glazing fluid as well. I just honestly didn't want to talk about skincare here because I have nothing new. It would be a little bit repetitive and boring. I am almost out of this. And so when they did the restock, I was able to purchase another one. And I'm gonna put a little bit of lip liner and then show you what this looks like afterwards. It's that Hailey Bieber trend that everyone's hopping on. Although she is certainly not the first person to do lip liner with a clear lip balm. Let me make that clear. And watch how this smooths over my lip lines and just really softens them for the most glass-like shine. So I'll insert the application clip here so you can see what it looks like on bare lips. It's just a clear. I have the unscented version, which is my favorite. I found that the watermelon slice and the caramel something had a very weird taste. It tasted like very intense floral perfume. Both John and I had that same experience when we tried it. We were like, ugh, we could not get it off our lips fast enough. But the unscented version truly doesn't smell like anything. It doesn't taste like anything. So I really love this one. And it's so flattering. It just gorgeously softens your lip lines. It's thin, but it's got grip. It's cushiony, so obviously I love it. It's my favorite kind of squeezy tube applicator. The actual tip of the applicator and the hole is really small. So for an example of a squeezy tube I don't like, actually the Pacifica one, see how the applicator's a lot bigger and the hole is huge? You have to be really careful not to squeeze out too much product. But this one is thicker and it has a smaller hole, so you never really over apply product, which I like. I'm finally on board with the Makeup Artist Color Pencil Train. It's the multi-use matte pencil. This is in the shade Weber Walnut. I bought this because of my friend Dev. This is just the perfect lip liner shade. It's like peachy mauve and brown all at the same time, and it looks so good when you pair it with red lipsticks, a red lip stain, clear glosses, so good. And I love that this is multi-use, so you can wear it on your face, you can use it on your eyes. I'm definitely gonna see how it looks on my eyes because that's totally the kind of shade I would wanna wear as an eyeliner. Yeah, I think this is absolutely fantastic. Speaking of lip liners, Tower 28 absolutely nailed their new one-liner multi-use liners. My two favorite shades are Work of Art and Fill Me In. Fill Me In is kind of a light, slightly mauve pink. It's just that perfect kind of like barely there lip color for me. I can pair it with a nude lipstick, with a pink lipstick, um, but it's also another multi-use pencil so you can use it on your face, on your eyes, lips, whatever. And for the pink one, it also actually looks weirdly good as a blush. I'll show you swatches in a second, but Work of Art is then that perfect taupey brown. So if you'd like to see a reel where I use these as multi-purpose pencils, I use them as lip liners, I use Draw Me as an eyeliner, and I use Fill Me In as a blush, I will leave that on the screen or in the description box below to an Instagram reel where I did a demo of these liners. And here are swatches. So this is Makeup Forever Wherever Walnut. You can see compared to Work of Art from Tower 28, this one is a little bit more peachy and like a hair of maybe pink in there or something a little mauve compared to Tower 28 Fill Me In, which is kind of a light mauve or like a light pinky mauve. And then we have Tower 28 Work of Art, which is like a medium taupe brown. Both formulas work as multi-use pencils. Makeup Forever comes in significantly more shades. Tower 28 only has three. I love them both. Moving on to eyes, I'll keep this super brief. The Glossier Monochromes palette in Almond is now suddenly like my most used palette of all time. So I posted a very thorough review and quite a scathing review of these palettes when it first came out. So I will leave that linked on the screen above, but this has caught my heart purely because of the color. Cons, of course, the packaging is so bulky. I will personally never go through an eyeshadow palette and so a refillable palette is useless for me. I hate that there is space for four shades and yet they only have three, especially considering the fact that there is barely any variation between these shades. But I'll show you in the application clip. Um, I like to use the matte shade all over my lid and all the way up into my crease and I put it on my lower lash line. The con here is that it's chalky, it's incredibly sheer, so it kind of takes a lot of blending. You really have to build this up if you want a good amount of pigment, but I just look past that because I love the color so much. I truly can't find this exact shade anywhere else. So if you've seen colors like this in better formulas, dear God, please let me know. It's a rosy tan, that's the best way I can describe it. So if you look at it and you think it's just like browns, it's not. I truly haven't been able to find these shades anywhere. 
that rosy tan. Oh, it's so good. I just, I hate these palettes. I hate the formula, but I can't stop using it. An eyeshadow palette that really surprised me is the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Luxury Eyeshadow Palette. Again, it's kind of like a rosy tan, but this one is just a little bit more pink than Glossier Almond. I like the subtle variation here. Obviously, these eyeshadow palettes are incredibly boring. Like, I feel like Hope Mess Tom would roast me for loving these palettes so much. I just find that it really makes my eye color pop. I loved the way that my eye makeup turned out in my Charlotte Tilbury video. I'll leave a link where I reviewed this eyeshadow palette in more detail in the description box below. Below. I pretty much just use these for the mattes and then the inner corner color. I don't find that this metallic does anything. I wanted it to be much more glittery. So I just use these three and I think it's great. The only other eyeshadows I've been loving in the past month are the ColourPop Super Shocks in 2014 and Casual Friday. The shade 2014 is an absolutely beautiful kind of light champagne gold. It has beautiful silver and blue glitters in it that kind of change according to the light you're in and I think it's just stunning. But the eyeshadow I've just been obsessed with lately is the ColourPop Super Shock Shadow in Casual Fridays. This one is much more of like a super metallic copper. I was just doing very messy applications in the footage that you can see, so I did get some fallout. Normally I don't have an issue with that though. It's just this gorgeous, like pumpkin-y, rich metallic copper. I officially have a favorite eyeliner pencil of all time, and it's the Kulfi Kajal Eyeliners. Uh, the one I'm wearing in this video and the one that I was wearing in my browsing trend mood video is the shade Tiger Queen, which is a rich terracotta. I feel like whenever companies launch eyeliner shades, they're never pigmented or bright enough. A lot of times they end up just being like slightly colorful versions of a black, but not with these. As you can see in the application footage, this is just a stunning terracotta and that color really pops. I also applied the shade Purpley Pitaka, which is this beautiful bright plum. I can't wait to play around with this. And then they sent Cheeky Chiku, which is a perfect brown. It actually finally looks like an eyeliner that's actually brown and not just a slightly lighter black. I feel like every brown eyeliner I try ends up looking black but not with this. These colors are incredible. These are the creamiest, the longest lasting and smudge proof eyeliners I've ever tried. Cool fee, you're killing it. Moving on to lip gloss. This is the product I was wearing all in the beginning of the video before I put this on. It's the Runway Rogue Lip Gloss in Perfect Pout. They sent me their super frosty lip glosses in PR and I loved the formula. I loved the way that they smelled, but it was just a lot of frostiness. So I went to the website. I was like, I love this formula. What else do they have? Surprisingly, most of the formulas are really frosty, but this one, oh, so good. They describe it as a clear with a hint of red and it's perfect. It's absolutely perfect. It's basically like the way people's lips look after they get lip filler. You know in the before and after pictures, in the after one, it's like super glossy and all like flushed red. That's what this lip gloss makes your lips look like. Mm. It smells like vanilla cake batter. The formula has a medium weight consistency, so it's not too thin, not too thick, but it's got some grip to it. It's very cushiony. One of the best lip gloss formulas I've ever tried. It's not sticky, but it's thick enough and has enough grip for me where it's pretty long lasting and it feels comfortable and nourishing. I feel like this lip product deserves to go viral. I feel like Gen Z, if they got a hold of this, they would go bonkers for it. Another favorite lip gloss for this month is the Give by Gwen Stefani Bubble Pop Electric Gloss in the shade All My Love, the perfect flushed lip color of a pinky red berry. It's a little bit balmy, but it's thick. Like this is a thick gloss with a great amount of grip. So you have to like that kind of thicker gloss formula. But to me, that is my absolute kind of favorite for a lip gloss. In fact, let me try it on. I wanna make sure that I'm describing the formula correctly. Oh yeah, mm, so good. It is a little stickier than the Runway Rogue, so if you're kind of torn between the Give Beauty or the Runway Rogue, if you like something that's thicker, has more grip, more longer lasting, and a little stickier, then go for the Give Beauty. But if you want something that is still cushiony and nourishing and has good grip, but is not sticky whatsoever, go for the Runway Rogue. You see with the Give Bubble Pop Electric Gloss, if I go like, there's a little bit of tackiness to it, but that's great for me because it means it's gonna be longer lasting. I just, I'm obsessed with this. I think if I were to create my own gloss formula, it would be this. I just love the feeling of this on my lips. And this color is one of my favorites I've ever tried. I 
I'm so impressed. I want this gloss in every color under the sun. Again, if I could create a gloss formula, it would be this. So I fell in love with a sample of the Bobbi Brown Extra Lip Tint in Bare Pink, but I just didn't like that color. So I picked up the shade Bare Raspberry from the Bobbi Brown website, and it's exactly the slightly pinky red that I've been looking for. Here's what the bullet looks like up close, but it's super, super sheer. It's just the perfect My Lips But Better pinky red. The only cons to it is that um, Bobbi Brown lip products smell kind of like citrus crayons to me, which I don't like. I also find that this formula is quite slippy. Like it would have been my 10 out of 10 product if this had the Tarte Vegan Lip Slip Lip Balm formula, which is a lot thicker and more cushiony. But for this color, I just absolutely love it. Two formulas from Bodyography that blew me away. These are their Fabric Texture Lipsticks, which are a very matte formula, but with like a little bit of a creaminess to them so that they don't feel drying. But it is that kind of like powder cream lip formula. Chiffon is just the absolute perfect warm beige. It's like a little yellow, a little peachy, it's just perfect when I wanna wear these kinds of colors that are kind of orangey and rich and beautiful for fall. And I'm really surprised because I don't tend to reach for colors that have like a warm yellow undertone. So the last Bodyography product I have are these more like traditional lipsticks. It doesn't say anywhere what this formula is called, but obviously I'll leave it linked to the description box. Watch how stiff and waxy this is. Like it's, Stiff, and I'm gonna tell you why it's a good thing in a second. So this is the shade Elizabeth, and I find that because this is so waxy, it just is the most long-lasting lipstick I've ever tried. The fabric texture ones are more like a creamy matte kind of powder looking finish. These are more of a satin lipstick that's just like a waxy formula. They smell fruity. I can't place what fruit it is, but they smell like sweet fruity candy. So these two formulas, the fabric texture lipstick and then whatever formula this is, are kind of finally getting me into bold lipsticks. Every bold lipstick I've ever worn has either been too drying, too unflattering, or too slippery. It just is not something I've ever liked. But with these two bodyography formulas, I am reaching for bold lips all the time and pigmented lipsticks, and I'm so excited about it. This is the only pigmented red lipstick I have ever liked. Like I've tried red lipsticks, I've tried red glosses, I've tried a hundred different red products. I've always said red just doesn't look good on me. Red is not for me, it's not flattering. This changed my mind, insane. This is the shade Joe and just like, oh, watch this. Oops, don't do that. I always thought that the only red lipstick I'd ever fall in love with is like a true red or maybe a slightly blue red because I do have cool undertones, but this is a bright orangey red and I just feel like it is it's everything. This this formula is just something special. Okay, I totally screwed myself because now my lips are completely stained. Victoria Beckham launched another shade of the Bitten Lip Tint. This is in the shade Je Tem, which is a gorgeous, slightly orangey red. It's just that perfect like red flush that is so beautiful and brightening that you can wear year round. It goes on like a gel stain, so it sets after a couple minutes. I do find that I like to apply a little bit of a lip balm, otherwise it can be drying like most lip stains. I obviously always, I also of course love the Victoria Beckham packaging. It's so weighted, it's so luxurious looking. Another red lip fave. And the last favorite in this video are the Tom Ford lip color lipsticks. Picked up the shade Neutral Party because of a Hung Van Gogh video that I watched. It just is this perfect mix of a brown and a red. It actually reminds me a lot of the Kosas lipstick in Stardust. But I decluttered that because I thought the formula was really drying and a little bit stiff on my lips. The Tom Ford lip color formula formula is so creamy. It adds a little bit of a shine to your lips. It just feels like luxury makeup, especially when you have this beautiful weighted packaging. It makes me understand why people really love luxury makeup. So I have neutral party right here. You can see it's a little brown, a little red, a little peachy, and then pink charade right here. It's kind of more like a cool toned pink. I thought it was gonna be a little bit more of like a rosy mauve, but I might declutter this one. I just wanted to say that Neutral Party is an incredible color and the formula of the Tom Ford Lip Color lipsticks is just everything I wanted it to be and more. I could talk about this product for hours because I have changed my mind about it so many times. It's the Make Beauty Radiant Skin Tint Diffusion Dew in the shade 1.5. This has so much mica in it, kind of like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. If you mixed that with a light to medium coverage foundation and like a hydrating gel. The first time I tried it, I was actually very impressed. 
It wasn't as wet looking as I thought it was gonna be. It's fragrance and essential oil free. It didn't look like that, you know, tin man look like some glowy primers can have. So I'm gonna insert the clip of me applying this this morning before I got ready for the video. And I think you can see there's a little bit of coverage. It blurs the skin a little bit. It adds a little bit of that highlighter effect from the mica, like the Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter. It adds a beautiful amount of hydration. It's a nice product. However, the sparkles just really throw me off. And the other one, the one that I'm gonna put in now was me filming this last night. When I'm under the more harsh lights, look how wet my skin looks. In the footage I filmed last night, it's just too glowy. It's just, it didn't look flattering like it did when I was in natural lighting. It's not the kind of product I will ever wear on camera. Like you will never see me wearing this under these lights because it would just look like my skin was drenched in water. And when I wore it throughout the day yesterday in natural lighting, as I kept looking around my mirrors in my house, it looked so good. So it's just like playing all these mind games with me where I'm like, is, is it good? Do I like it? Do I not like it? Do I look bad? Next part, the sparkly mica pigments. Okay, I'm gonna show you a clip of what it looks like after you've rubbed it in on your face. If you look at your fingers, you'll see what I'm talking about. I'm so confused. Why did they do this? You can see that when the coverage wears off, you're left with essentially glitter everywhere which is not something that we want all over our face, but you can't see the glitter unless you get really up close. And even then it's only in a few different areas. So this is a clip of me that I filmed this morning. And as you can see, I'm under artificial lights and that's where you can see the sparkles a lot. So on my upper lip, under my eyes, it was really noticeable. Here's another Instagram story I filmed of me wearing the skin tint this morning. I hadn't applied the make concealer yet. This is just me in natural lighting. And this is the way that the skin tint looks. So if you're like never under artificial lighting, this is amazing. Also shade range for this, not evenly balanced. It does skew light. I was a little bit bummed to see some influencers who got this in PR talk about what a great shade range it was. So those are my thoughts on the skin tint. Can't tell if it goes in a faves or a fail, maybe a little bit of both. Moving into the clear fails for me, I've got the Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Complexion Touch. So this is a beautiful product on some people. For me, I just could not get it to work because it kept clinging to my nose and patches around my mouth, areas where I don't look like I have texture anywhere, but this makes me look like I do. So. I tried everything. I tried using with, um, blending with a sponge, blending with a brush, blending with fingers. I tried pumping it on the back of my hand, rubbing in the suspended pigments first. I just could not fix the texture issues. And it was noticeable if someone were sitting really close to me, you know, I feel like you'd be able to see it kind of breaking up. It looked, it just looked a little makeup-y, you know? It didn't look like skin. And I'm gonna keep trying to figure it out because if I can fix the texture issues, then it would, immediately be like a favorite of all time. Another one I have a complicated relationship with is the Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Concealer in Four Fair. I'll post a link to my concealer showdown between the Milk Makeup Concealer and the Charlotte Tilbury. I don't know, I just don't think it's that flattering. I'll drop in a clip of me applying this in my concealer video where in this part, I'm pointing out that compared to the Milk Makeup side that's matte, the Charlotte Tilbury was not as flattering on the hollows of my under eyes. It really accentuated that hollowness. And I believe that's because of the mica. If you have fine lines and that's what you're most concerned about, maybe the Charlotte Tilbury would work for you. But if you have dark circles or you have hollowness that you want to kind of cover, I think the Milk Makeup is better for that. I have a controversial pick I'm genuinely scared to talk about. I posted a quick little snapshot of my September fails on Instagram and I got like my DMs blown up. I enjoy this formula. I think it's a nice lipstick, but this particular shade really did not work out for me. I had such high hopes for the shade Baby because everyone was talking about this color and it looks so bad on me. Like I look like trash, I'll show you. This probably ends up looking like a rosy mauve on people, but on me, it looks purple, like dusty purple brown. It's described as a soft pink. I think on the website, soft pink or, oh, it's like a baby pink, I don't know. See what I mean? It's like gray, gray purple mauve. It is not at all what the website says it is. This is a very stiff, balmy formula. So if you wanna get the opacity that you want and you wanna get that comfort and that shine and that balminess, you really have to kind of like work it into the lips. 
which I don't mind. It's totally fine. This kind of feels like a layer of if, if Vaseline kind of hardened, this is what this would feel like. What happens over time that I'll show you is you have to press so hard to really swipe around your lips that this is what happens to the lipsticks. You can see it's starting to happen here where it's starting to tilt and it's starting to basically melt and get bent against the outer ridge of the bullet. So with the color slip that I wear all of the time, this has become a dent from me applying the product and it's gonna break off eventually. So while I think it's a nice, comfortable, balmy formula, I think people have given Merit a little bit too much credit for the formula. There's a translucence to the formula that I find a little bit unflattering. A passionate fail of mine is the Kosas Beachy Clean uh, Chemistry AHA Serum Deodorant. I'm sure that this is effective. I've heard from a lot of people that this is incredible. I just could not get past the smell. Ugh. There's no world, there's, there's no world in which this smells beachy. It is so incredibly floral. It's like, I don't even wanna smell it again. It's like jasmine. If I had known it was so intensely floral, I certainly wouldn't have purchased this, but I'm sure it's a good product otherwise. And the last product in this video is the Salt Air Skin Energizing Serum Body Wash. Now, I wanna be clear, it's not that the product itself is bad. I actually think it's a great product. I love that they come in these travel sizes for $7. You can kind of try the scents out before you commit to a full size. It's a nice formula, although I can't say I'm picky about body washes. And these do smell really good. However, these are so intensely fragranced that when you wash off the body wash, you can smell these on your skin for hours, like hours and hours and hours. Obviously for some people that might be a pro, I mean, that might be something that's really appealing to you, but for my very sensitive nose and my boyfriend's very sensitive nose, it's just not something um, that I really want. And just so you know, they do actually have a line of fragrance-free products, but I like fragrance in my body care just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit. If you made it this far, thank you so much. I hope you'll subscribe for more videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.